We in the Pentecostal and Charismatic world did a really good job of proclaiming, confessing. Um, and we taught it well. I still teach it. I, 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 st I believe in it. Open your mouth. You have a speaking faith. I did a sermon today. I aired a sermon today called Condition the Atmosphere. Condition the atmosphere with your words. Why would you not? You have the power to do it. Why would you just let the atmosphere be whatever? Because if you don't condition it, it will condition you. But there's a flip side to that coin. And it doesn't get near as much preaching because it ain't as fun. It's not as fun to shut up as it is to talk. And the flip side of that coin is faith doesn't come by you confessing Scripture. Faith doesn't come by you talking. Faith doesn't come by you praying. Faith doesn't come by you preaching, by you singing. By... Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes when you listen. This is why people study themselves into atheism. Okay? So they study and they study and they go, that didn't, I don't think that even really happened. We can't find that in a historical record. Uh-oh, faith's starting to crumble. Oh, I don't know if this really, oh, this book conflicts with this book. Oh, that book wasn't written. Oh, okay. I don't know if I even believe in it. You see, you see people who end up there by deconstruction. And what that tells me is that their faith was in what they could put together on the timeline in the natural realm, their faith wasn't what they heard about a man named Jesus. This is why I say to you, I believe in a resurrected Jesus. The other stuff is secondary to the resurrected Jesus. It's great, it's beautiful, it's wonderful, but it's secondary to the resurrected Jesus. That's what makes us believers. That's what makes us children of God. It's also what makes you, if you push that, it'll make you a radical. Because people go, do you really believe this invisible stuff? Go, yeah, I really believe in the realm of the Spirit. I'm not just a social Christian who goes and attends church because it's the good moral American thing to do, and it looks really good on a resume, and it looks really good on my political affiliation to belong and to have a list of structures and to have a list of principles, and then I can just fall in line with whatever everyone else does and call that Christianity. The, long, the longer you listen to Jesus, the less that satisfies you. It doesn't, it doesn't work for you because you start to listen and hear the very sound of the discipleship of Jesus and what that means. And as that happens, as that occurs, you start to practice hearing his voice. The faith comes by that hearing. I want to close with one story everyone's familiar with from the life of Jesus. And it is a great example of Jesus not being in the feelings business of the sword of his mouth cutting between soul and spirit between how you feel and who you are and also the reward that is yours for learning to just listen and sit silently at his feet luke chapter 10 verse 38 this is the famous mary and martha story it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named martha welcomed him into her house and she had a sister called mary who also sat at jesus feet and heard his word but Martha was distracted with much serving. The word serving there is the Greek word for ministry. Martha was distracted by ministry. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. Now, before you read any further, what, what the story has been laid out is you have two women, one of whom is in the ministry of doing and the other who is in the ministry of sitting at the feet of Jesus. And one is, is activity, activity. Lord, get her to help me. And while Mary sits at the feet of Jesus, listening to whatever Jesus says, Martha continues to go about and, and serve. Next verse. Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you're worried and troubled about many things. One thing's needed, and Mary's chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. Um... This is what I mean by Jesus wasn't in the feelings business. I wouldn't have done this to Martha if I was at her house. If I went to her house and I was teaching, I do a lot of living room meetings, okay? So I've been, this, I've been in this situation and people are setting attention, rapt attention. And if the hostess of the house walked up to me at a meeting and went, hey, Pastor Paul, could you, could you get somebody to come in here and help me? Because everybody's just in there listening to you and I'm in here trying to get all the snacks ready. And I need, some, I need some help. I promise you, I would say, hey, man, I'll find some. I'll come in there and help you right now. I mean, I'll stop teaching. I'll come in there. And I'll fix some snacks with you. But I'm gonna, we'll find somebody. And we would get some. We, and Jesus says to her, no. I'm not going to pull somebody away from hearing the word so they can go in there and do ministry. She chose the good thing. And, and what stuns me about it 
is that it's edifying, exhorting, and comforting to Martha in a way that's very unfamiliar to me because it had to hurt her feelings a little bit. But there was something in that that needed knocked down so that something beautiful could be built. Because Martha has obviously made ministry the focal point of this encounter. And the focal point of the encounter should be Jesus. And so what needs knocked down is ministry serving so that you can listen. And I think not to make too big of a deal of their particular situation, but it is worth saying, sometimes ministry gets in the way of listening to Jesus. We're so busy doing stuff, we don't even stop to listen if it's the thing Jesus wants done. It's just what you do to build a church. It's just what you do to build a ministry. It's just what you do to build a family. It's just what you do to build a country. It's just what you do to build, 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 do, 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 go, go, go. And we go, was God in any of that? Well, he had to be, and we made it work. And j- we made it work doesn't mean God was in it. <laughs> and we, we've got this thing of, well, if, if, if God wasn't in it, it would have failed. Really? If God wasn't in it, it would have failed. People in the world do stuff all the time and don't ask God's help. And they make it. That's like, I've always been amazed at people that go, well, if you stop paying your tithes, you'll go broke. I go, go tell that to the billionaire in the world who's never paid tithes a day in his life. Doesn't live for the Lord. He didn't lose all of his money because he didn't give 10% of it to God. God's not on some financial uh, rabbit hunt where he goes, I'm going to go find whatever rich guy is not paying enough into charity and I'm going to go knock his business down. We're not, it's not about what I build or what I do. It's about being able to listen to him. And don't let anything get in the way of that. Don't let anything get in the way of sitting at his feet. Jesus goes, I am not going to stop her from doing what is good. What's good? I'll never take it away from her. What's good? Rest at the feet of Jesus and listen to the voice of the lamb because the lamb is talking. All of us have this opportunity. We don't get to sit at the physical feet of Jesus, but we do get to sit at his feet in the spirit whenever and however long we can manage it. But find moments to listen to him. There's no substitute. There is no substitute for time spent alone with the Lord. It is the single most important thing that you have as a child of God. And I can't emphasize enough what it has done in my own life um, to, to put me into a place of rest and stability and to say, Lord, I don't know the next step. I don't know what we're supposed to do next, but I know I'm going to spend time alone with you. I am and have been so my entire life of walking with the Lord, so fascinated with the words of Jesus, so fascinated with the time spent alone with Jesus. Um, I, I think it's unfortunate that, that we're, we, I don't want to say it that way, I think Jesus is getting too hard to find in our sermons and our songs and our ministries. And this was all supposed to be about him. It wasn't supposed to be about anything but him. Let's stop being cumbered about with other things and let's restore the beautiful fascination of listening to the lamb, listening to the lamb speak.